You often hear from people who don't live in New York City and haven't lived in New York City that they couldn't live in New York City because they're not that kind of person. That's always struck me as a strange and somewhat incomprehensible thing to say, being myself in New York City and meeting every day people who, because they live here, must be that kind of person. It's strange because taking together all of them, the web of their qualities and desires and flaws, I can't quite envision the types who are left out. The thing is, I don't trust them. I don't trust that they haven't confused an idea of New York City for the real thing. And for that matter, I don't trust that they haven't confused an idea of themselves for the real thing. New York, it's conventionally thought, is big and loud and fast and drunk, and it is those things. Poor man Scotch. Cheers. The troops. So cool. That's good. Thanks, man. Woo! But New York can be as small as it is big, as quiet and slow as it is loud and fast. The city, when viewed from within, is really a collection of peculiar neighborhoods, which is to say, a collection of charms. This is my friend now, this is Jerry. Each has their own secrets, each has their own weird identities, and each has their own set of random accumulated rules, like when the horses come out at 2 a.m. on Essex in the Lower East Side, or when the wealthy folk go out to get their brunch on Sunday mornings in the Upper West, or how we all just assume that street meat is perfectly safe because it tastes so fucking good. Mustard, please. Copious amounts of mustard. Always haggle. Always haggle. These neighborhoods cohere not around a quality common to all, but by a kind of Wittgensteinian family resemblance, by a series of overlapping similarities, like the series of overlapping character traits that give to its 8.2 million inhabitants a kindred bond, and a bond that holds fast in tragedy and pain. For me, what makes being in New York City extraordinary is the feeling of standing on the knife's edge of history, what it must have felt like to be at Rome during the Caesars or at London in the height of empire. It's as if you're surfing the wave of time and you can see what's coming and you can see every expression of humanity amplified and multiplied, made stranger and more tolerant. New York overwhelms you into a kind of unceasing awe and you can feel everything on every corner all the time. There are a lot of hedonists in New York City and a lot of good people. And it may be the best place in the universe. Anyway, it's the best place in the universe to get a drink at four in the morning. Evan, let's go. Yep, yep, coming. <laughs>